Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of my Kingdom Death series. This time I'll be painting the Screaming Antelope. I'm starting off by priming the antelope with Korox White from Games Workshop, and then putting the following paints onto my palette. The first paint I'm using is Dryad Bark, and I'm base coating the shaggy hair all along the antelope's back and its tail. This first coat of color I'm going to allow to dry because it's going to serve as the shaded area in the recesses, but the next two colors I'm going to add at the same time to create some highlights right away with some wet blending. I've given the dryad bark about five minutes to dry, and now I have Mornfang Brown and XV88 on my wet palette. I'm first going to brush over most of the surface of the fur, but not mashing my brush downward like I did with the dryad bark to get into the recesses. You could also dry brush this on if you're not a fan of wet blending. You can see from my brush strokes that it's basically like dry brushing but with a more loaded brush. Now if some of the paint is getting into the recesses, it's not a big deal. That can be fixed later with a dark wash if you're not happy with how it's looking. I'm leaving the bottom of the fur along the body and under the neck dark, as well as the underside of the tail. Once I've got some good coverage with the Mornfang Brown, I'm switching to the XV88. While the Mornfang is still wet, I'm going to roughly blend in the XV88 on the top 30% or so of the fur and the tail. Now at this point, you do not want a lot of paint on your brush. You don't want the XV88 seeping into the recesses if you can help it. I'm just lightening up the top part of the fur for some quick easy highlights. I'm happy with the shaggy appearance of this fur, so I'm moving on to the horns. Now I nearly forgot to turn on my camera for this next part, but as you can see I'm using three colors for the horns. The bottom third I'm painting with Steel Legion Drab. For the next third I'm using Dryad Bark and wet blending the two colors where they meet. I'm just switching back and forth between the two colors until I get a natural looking transition on the horns. You can also do this effect using washes, which is how I did it on the Abominator in a previous video. Next I'm switching to a thinned down Abaddon Black, about 50-50 water and paint, and doing the same thing with the top third of the horns. For all the muscle tissue of the antelope, I'm using a 3 to 1 mix of Tanned Flesh from Army Painter and Screamer Pink from Games Workshop. I'm covering both the outside of the antelope's body with this color, as well as the inside of the gaping mouth and its torso. You can see that I've painted the head of the antelope, but that was just an experiment. I didn't like that color, so I'll be covering that with a darker color next. After a couple of thin layers, the body of the antelope has a nice even dark pink color. Next I'm painting the head and the ears of the antelope with a one to one mix of Dryad Bark and Mornfang Brown. This is definitely going to take a couple layers as well because as you can see that lighter brown is showing from beneath. That's the majority of the base colors on, so now I'm going to start with some shading. The first shade I'm using is Agrax Earthshade for the horns and the face. This shade is going to help smooth the color transitions on the horns and bring out some more details on the face. I'm also using it on a few select spots on the fur. Here I'm darkening the split of the fur down the back with the wash, and also all the darker regions of the fur that didn't get any highlighting. For all the flesh I'm using a mix of two parts Reichland Flesh Shade and one part Carolberg Crimson. I'm also adding in a small amount of water so it doesn't overly darken the flesh color.
There's something always very satisfying about adding a wash to a miniature and seeing a ton of detail suddenly appear. The antelope has a lot of such detail in the muscles. If you're not happy with how dark the recesses are after this wash, I'd recommend just adding small amounts directly to where you want it after this first layer of wash is dried. Once the wash is completely dried, I'm going to start highlighting the muscles by creating another 3 to 1 mix of the tanned flesh and screamer pink. I'm just going to trace over all the muscles to enhance their definition. At this point I'm being very careful not to have too much paint on my brush at once, to avoid any of it dripping into the grooves between the muscles. The muscles are looking good, but I'm going to give them a bit more highlighting by adding some barbarian flesh into the mix. I'm going to focus this color on the top parts of the muscles and on any upturned surfaces like the top of the legs. For each of the two flesh colors I've used for the highlighting, I've added two thin layers of paint to avoid any harsh looking lines. I'm using two different colors for the highlights on the horns. I'm starting off by highlighting all the ridges on the horns with Steel Legion Drab. This is another case where you could get away with a gentle dry brush, but I want some smoother looking lines, so I'm using a number one brush just to trace each ridge individually. For the bottom half of each horn, I'm now doing a second highlight using Carex Stone. Next I'm painting the hooves in much the same way that I painted the horns. I'm first putting out some Skavenblight Dinge, Steel Legion Drab, and Carrick Stone. Next I'm mixing the edges together to get some transitional colors. So here I'm combining my grey and brown, and then I'm mixing the brown and the tan together. Now I'm starting with the darkest color and coating the entire hoof with it. You should let this first layer dry so that your subsequent layers don't rub it off. Now one by one I'll add each color, but each layer will cover a smaller area moving towards the tip of the hoof. So here I'm adding a mix of Skaven Blight and Steel Legion Drab, followed by some pure Steel Legion Drab. So after some playing around and some wet blending, you get a more natural looking hoof. The final step is to paint an edge highlight using pure Carex Stone. For a simpler version of this, you could paint the entire hoof with Steel Legion Drab, paint an edge highlight of Carex Stone and just darken the top of the hoof with some Nuln Oil. The next thing I'm painting is all the creepy little hands around the gaping mouth and the abdomen. For this I'm using Army Painter's Barbarian Flesh. You have to look around carefully for these, in some places they're just tiny fingertips pointing through the skin. I almost never use a number zero brush for anything, but these hands are so small that I'm using one now. So here is what our creepy hands and mouth is looking like so far. The next thing I'm going to do is cover all the hands with a wash of Reikling Flesh Shade.
Once that's dry, I'll go back with my number zero brush and the Barbarian flesh and repaint over all the tops of the hands and the fingers. Here are the three colors I'll be using to paint all the teeth around the inside of the mouth. This pink is really bright to be painting a white over top of, so I'm first going to base coat all the teeth with a layer of Xandri dust. As I've been painting, I've been noticing mold lines that I missed. As I go, I've been filing these down. I don't normally prime over these spots again, however, since the rough texture left behind by the file is enough to let your layer paints adhere. Now that the pink is covered up, I'm going to paint the teeth one of two colors, either Ivory from Vallejo or Screaming Skull from Games Workshop. I'm just randomly painting the teeth one of these two colors. Next I'm using a mix of Agrax Earthshade and a small amount of water to shade the gaps in the teeth. I'm not worried about hitting the other parts of the teeth, but I'm trying to focus most of the wash into the gaps between them. For the next step, I'll be highlighting the ears and the face. I'm starting off by using some pure Mornfang Brown. I'll be focusing this paint around the edges of the ears and the mouth, the top of the head and the snout, as well as the raised lines along the sides of the face. At this point, my paint is roughly 50-50 paint and water, and I'm only using a small amount of paint at a time, just slowly building up the brightness of the raised areas. After a layer or two of this, I'm mixing an equal amount of XV88 into my paint. I'm using this color mostly on the lines around the face and the edges around the eyes and the mouth. Next up is the eyes. I'm first going to cover the entirety of the eye with two or three layers of demonic yellow. If you had any of the Mornfang brown spill over onto the eye, you may first want to cover the eye with a layer of tan, like Xandri dust. It's difficult to get this pale yellow to cover up darker colors. For the pupil, I'm using a Baden Black. Antelopes actually have a rectangular pupil that gives them almost 360 degrees of vision. Also, it's very alien and creepy looking, so I'm definitely going with it. I'm very gradually building up the thickness of the pupil with small brush strokes and comparing each side to make sure they're both angled in the same direction and also the same width and length. Now to create some shade variation in the eye, I'm first going to completely cover the eye with Fugan Orange Wash. Next I'm taking a damp brush and wiping off the area around the pupil. One eye was darkened a bit too much for my liking so I went back later with some more demonic yellow and brightened it up a bit. The next step for painting the antelope is the base. I actually have a custom base made specifically for the antelope, but I had already pinned the antelope to a standard base before the custom one arrived. So instead, I'm going to cut some of the stone faces from a different base and add them to mine. Now they say you should never pull the blade of a knife towards yourself when you cut something, but old habits die hard. There's a handful of basing materials in this video that all come from the same place called Rain City Hobbies. They make bases specifically for Kingdom Death. I'll put a link and a name for all the materials on the base in the video description. I'm super gluing the faces onto my base, as well as a random skull. Next, I'm using Vallejo Earth to create some ground texture onto the base. I'm also using it to blend in the edges of the other objects I've added to the base. Vallejo Earth shrinks quite a bit after it dries, so after about 30 minutes of drying time, I came back and added more of the earth texture. 
While the earth is still fresh, however, I'm adding a mix of large and small rocks by sticking them directly into the earth texture. After giving that a couple hours to dry, I need to go back and prime all the extra bits that were added to the base. For this I'm using Vallejo's Black Brush On Primer, but any color will work for this. Next I'm covering all the rocks in the faces with a layer of Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm covering the skull with a layer of Ushabdi Bone. For everything I've painted grey, I'm going to do a series of successively brighter dry brushes, starting with a one-to-one -one mix of Celestra Grey and Mechanica Standard Grey. For the second dry brushing, I'm using a pure Celestra Grey, and I'm starting to focus mainly on the top surface of the rocks and the faces. For the final dry brush, I'll be using Longbeard Grey, and I'm only gently picking out the edges around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth of the faces, and the top ridges on the rocks. For the skull, I'll first give it a wash of Agrax Earthshade, followed by a dry brush with Ushabdi Bone. Next I'm covering the entire ground with Steel Legion Drab to give it less of a red tint. Vallejo Earth almost looks like it's Martian soil due to its redness. The Steel Legion Drab is also going to cover up all the mess I've made with the dry brushing. The final step for the ground is to give it a quick dry brush using Carrick Stone. I want to add a bit of color around the base of the rocks and the stone faces. I'm using Athonian Camo Shade to introduce a bit of green to give the appearance of algae or lichen. All of the Kingdom Death bases have two edges. I've been painting the first edge of mine using Dryad Bark and the second edge with Abaddon Black. So at this point all the painting is finished and it's time to seal the miniature with some matte varnish. I'm using Tester's Dull Coat for this, then letting it dry for about an hour. Now it's time for some final touches. I'm mixing about two parts of blood for the Blood God and one part water to create a shiny red glaze for the inside of the giant mouth. You could also splash some of this on the teeth if you want it to make it look like it's killed something recently. For the eyes, I'm doing something similar. I'm mixing a bit of glossy Ard Coat with a bit of water and covering the eyes with it. Next, I'm going to add some flock to the base. I'm starting out with a short turfy flock, and I'll be putting this mostly around all the rocks and the faces. I always mix my PVA glue with water to make it easier to spread. Now I'm adding a few wildflowers. I normally always use super glue on tufts of grass, but these are insanely sticky and gooey on the bottom, so I'm not bothering this time. 
For the empty space that's left over on this base, I'm adding some more PVA glue and then using Citadel Grass. As an optional final step, you could add a saliva effect. To do this, you need some original UHU glue. Unfortunately, you can't buy this stuff in North America, but you can buy it on Amazon and have it shipped to you from Europe. Pour some out, wind it onto a toothpick, and then stretch it from one point to another. This stuff smells horrible, but when it hardens, it looks clear and shiny. I use this in a few spots between the teeth and the huge mouth, as you can see here. And here's the finished product, ready to wipe out an entire party of adventurers in true Kingdom Death style. I'd like to say thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. They keep motivating me to get these videos out faster and make the process more enjoyable. If you would like to see what's going on behind the scenes, chat with the community, share your pictures, and help decide what miniatures should be painted next, check me out on Patreon. Thank you also to Rain City Hobbies for agreeing to donate a prize to the viewers of this channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and as always, thank you very much for watching.